But legislation, I repeat, cannot solve this problem alone. It must be solved in the homes of every American, in every community across our country. In this respect, I want to pay tribute to those citizens north and south who've been working in their communities to make life better for all. They are acting not out of sense of legal duty, but out of a sense of human decency. Like our soldiers and sailors in all parts of the world, they are meeting freedom's challenge on the firing line, and I salute them for their honor and their courage. Betsy's daddy had a black man working for him as a porter. He said, Will is the best salesperson I've got. He's the smartest one that works for me. And I made Will a salesperson. And he was the first one in Nashville that had a black salesperson. I remember daddy came home that night and said, I'm making Will a salesperson. If I get a brick in the window, I may have to go out. Somebody may throw a brick in the window. I first of all want to express my warm appreciation to the governor and the mayor of this state and city and to the people for a very uh, generous welcome. And particularly to all those young men and women who lined the street and uh, played uh, music for us as we drove in to this stadium. We're glad they're here with us, and we feel the musical future of this city and state is assured. <laughs> the nation, indeed the whole world, has watched recent events in the United States with alarm and dismay. No one can deny the complexity of the problems involved in assuring to all of our citizens their full rights as Americans. But no one can gainsay the fact that the determination to secure these rights is in the highest traditions of American freedom. In these moments of tragic disorder, a special burden rests on the educated men and women of our country to reject the temptations of prejudice and violence, and to reaffirm the values of freedom and law on which our free society depends. In Louisville, Kentucky, Joanne Turner was driving, following her husband, Eugene, home after purchasing a car. She was terrified by the news she heard on the car's radio. <laughs> as though something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. Stand by just a moment, please. Sue Spence, wife of Marine Lieutenant J.R. Spence, was bowling with other military wives in Honolulu, Hawaii, when they heard a dreadful announcement. There's a Secret Service man spread eagle over the top of the car. We understand Governor and Mrs. Connolly are in the car with President and Mrs. Kennedy. We can't see who has been hit, if anybody's been hit, but apparently something is wrong here. Something is terribly wrong. It came over the, the loudspeaker that he had been shot. And a lot of the women just started crying and, and carrying on. And I thought, well, why don't they wait and see? You know, why, why are they getting so upset? In a very emotional time. Very emotional. Because everybody uh, was so, in, he was like, they talk about a rock star now. That's the way the Kennedys were. Everybody wanted to know everything about them, everything, and their children. We do not and cannot confirm the reports at this time that the president has been shot. One witness says he definitely was shot, that he was hit twice, that he saw the president slump in his seat. As I say, this is not confirmed at this time. In Nashville, Tennessee, Barbara Liston was working at Charlotte Park Elementary School when she was notified of the unbelievable events occurring in Dallas. President Kennedy got shot. That was a, a tremendous thing. And the cab, we were, I think I was making the bread at that time. And 
the secretary came bursting through the doors and said that President Kennedy had had been shot. It's terrible me yet to, to think about that. And uh, of course, at that time, we didn't know how you know how badly he was hurt, and uh, so you felt like you know at first it was disbelief. You couldn't believe that someone would really do that, and uh, then it was. Um, uh, uh, fear, I think. We felt fear that he would die. President Kennedy has been given a blood transfusion at Parkland Hospital here in Dallas in an effort to save his life after he and Governor John Conley of Texas were shot in an assassination attempt in downtown Dallas. A priest has been ordered, emergency supplies of blood also being rushed to the hospital. Nan Cross was drinking coffee in a friend's kitchen in Springfield, Oregon when news of the president's death reached her. Just a moment, just a moment, we have a bulletin coming in. We now switch you directly to Parkland Hospital and KBOX News Director Bill Hampton. The president of the United States is dead. I have just talked to Father Oscar Hubert of the Holy Trinity Catholic Church. He and another priest tell me that a pair of men have just administered the last rites of the Catholic Church to President Kennedy. I asked the father, is Mr. Kennedy dead? And his quote, he's dead all right. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now, the president is dead. Every generation is a witness to moments of tragedy, but the sudden and violent event that occurred in America on November 22, 1963, was simultaneously experienced by the entire population and set the tumultuous course of the following years. President Kennedy's brother-in-law, Sergeant Shriver, worked with officials at the Military District of Washington, D.C. to plan the state funeral of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. On Friday, November 22nd, in Nashville, Tennessee, Governor Frank Clement declared a month-long period of mourning. On Saturday, November 23rd, a sparse and somber crowd witnessed the Vanderbilt University's football team victory over George Washington University at Nashville's Dudley Field. A memorial service replaced the scheduled halftime performance. On Sunday, November 24th, a memorial service attended by Governor Clement and City Mayor Beverly Briley was held on Nashville's Capitol Hill. In downtown Nashville, stores decorated and ready for Christmas shoppers locked their doors. On Sunday, November 24th, the religious editor for the Tennessean wrote, Nashville's sorrow over the death of President John F. Kennedy was reflected as the city turned to prayer and prepared for today's services. People of all faiths look to their spiritual leaders for guidance in the moments following the tragedy that consumed the nation. So these are Rabbi Posner's words that he shared that he wrote at a memorial service following the assassination of the president. He revitalized old-fashioned ideals. He inspired young men and women to sacrifice their comforts and careers to help the deprived people in faraway lands. So many scoffed at the idea of the Peace Corps, yet this may be his most lasting memorial. All men in politics constantly face men of equal good faith and decency. Kennedy faced these, but he also had to cope with virulent hatred that was personal, not political and eventually was fatal. If we judge and honor a man because of his friends, we may judge and honor President Kennedy because of his enemies. He was a friend of mine. He was killed at no purpose.